so very good morning to all myself vikas mondol assistant professor of the department of applied electronics and instrumentation asansol engineering college a heartiest welcome to you all on the webinar on final control element and overview of actuator and control valves organized by department of applied electronics instrumentation asansol engineering college so now i would like to introduce our key speaker mr dibbendu chakraborty who is a a young and very talented engineer in the field of instrumentation he presently working with the krishan power limited the krishan power limited nothing but a power plant thermal power plant organization mr dibbendu chakraborty is very dynamic and young engineer and play the very vital role in instrumentation domain he also have more than 3 research articles in reputed national and international journal and conference since we have limited time so not wasting much more time i would like to request mr dibbendu chakraborty please continue the technical topic on this webinar the final control element thank you all i heartiest welcome the student of asansol engineering college holdia institute of technology heritage institution technology dr b c roy durgapur the college of engineering management kolaghat nojrul central ne polytechnic ruknanpur rcc institute of information technology kolkata so dibindu chakraborty mr dibindu chakraborty thank you all continue thank you all good morning everyone good morning as vikas uh, already morning, told sir. about my introduction so i will uh, start directly so no uh, today i will continue with final control element and overview of actuator and control valve so in final control element we will see the definition operation and after that we will to see the actuator types of and function operation and control valves uh, types of valve diaphragm control valve and in diaphragm control valve we will see various factors flow characteristics i to p converter in position transmitter circuit selection and phasing okay Uh, first of all, what do you mean by final control element? So this is the very vital topic you come across uh, whenever you uh, your teacher teaches you regarding the process control subject in your semester or in your uh, class. So final control element is a typical process control Back application. Uh, it is a process control application. A measurement and control of some process variables is carried out using a low energy analog to or digital signal to represent the variable. The device which translates this low energy signal into a level of action with the process under control is called final control element. Suppose you need to you need to actuate a, a lever that uh, that need very huge pressure. Suppose 10 kg per centimeter. That pressure is required to uh, actuate the lever, but to actuate uh, to operate the 10 kg per centimeter square you need some uh, uh, different gear mechanism and that gear mechanism is operated with a very low energy uh, signal uh, suppose your uh, 3 to 15 psi or 1 1 bar this much of pressure so this much of pressure is acting on that gear and that gear is operating that 10 kg per centimeter square and that uh, lever will be operated so this is the final control element is nothing but uh, the low energy analog or digital signal to represent uh, to actuate the uh, high energy or uh, high level of signal so in the final control element we will see that uh, for temperature control heating coil and cooler is the element uh, for flow control control valve uh, and for pressure air spring of burden diaphragm of pressure transducer all these are the example of your final control element next we will see a final control operation how it's work so control signal 
first we have to give some control signal it may be electrical or magnetic 4 to 20 milliampere or 0 to 15 psi this control signal is again converted convert, converted to either in high to peak current to pressure or resistance to ampere uh, it uh, works uh, like the force balance principle or uh, LVDT type and from this conversion uh, this signal after conversion actuates some uh, element convert control signal physical yeah. action electrical if it is electrical actuator then sov and motors are there for hydraulic uh, type cylinders are there and for pneumatic uh, uh, diaphragm and uh, your piston cylinders are there. and this actuator uh, finally uh, control the uh, final control element uh, that is the translate energy to process action like control valve heater cooler transmitter diaphragm and all this will operate a process process action suppose flow control of any process temperature control of any process or pressure or level so this is the uh, main mechanism of a final control element okay and uh, you can see the control systems uh, control systems are of electrical type 4 to 20 million or 10 to 24 volt DC, or pneumatic type 10, uh, 0 to 15 psi or 0.22 or 1 bar or in case of hydraulic 200 to 250 psi depend upon the system in um, signal conversion uh, system uh, and in this uh, section if you see uh, high to peak it works on the principle of force balance system it converts 4, 4 to 20 milliampere to 3 to 15 uh, psi in case of high to peak it works on the principle of force balance system it converts the 4 to 20 milliampere signal to the uh, 3 to 15 uh, psi pneumatic signal and in vi uh, type op amp and all effect pickups uh, are the principal uh, working principle and in ri type uh, resistance to ampere uh, feedback questionnaires are basically they are potentiometric type lvdt and works on the principle of mutual induction lvdt principles okay and if you see our next section this actuator in actuator it is a device that converts the control signal into physical action as i told earlier to for opening or closing the valve or any other element Electrical solenoids convert an electrical signal to uh, mechanical motion. It consists of a spring or uh, plunger, freestanding or spring loaded. In case of pneumatic actuator, it works on the principle of pressure as a force per unit area. Okay, we will see all these things in detailing on uh, very next slide. Mm -hmm. And in case of hydraulic, an incompressible fluid is used as control pressure to actuate any valve by increasing or decreasing the working pressure by adjusting the area of the Forcing piston. Okay, uh, we just uh, noted down. Uh, we will explain all this thing in the mind in the next slide. And in final control element, we'll see the valves and heater. These are the uh, few examples. Now, in hydraulic actuator, if you see the hydraulic actuator, uh, so this is the. It works on the princi principle of Pascal. Okay, if you see this uh, force F1 when acts on this piston. Uh, this pressure will be transferred to this area okay this is the uh, uh, hydraulic pressure of fluid pressure and this is the area of piston uh, 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 piston one and piston two this is the f2 force this is the working uh, force okay so when uh, this piston uh, when a force is applied on this so this force will be f1 equal to pf into a1 means this hydraulic pressure into this area and similarly for uh, this force uh, the resultant force uh, or the working force uh, this uh, the force of the piston divided uh, into multiplied by the area of e2 and a1 so uh, this is you can say uh, hydraulic force of piston or uh, say six bar suppose six bar is applied from a1 and resulting force of the piston is say 18 bar so as the area is increased you can see the uh, pressure also increased okay so these are the few uh, diagram of our uh, of uh, your hydraulic actuator this is a spring loaded this is a uh, spring, spring loaded single action actuator when uh, air is inlet from this side, it will push the uh, piston towards this direction. And when this uh, air is released, the spring automatically balances the uh, piston to its normal position. And in case of this is the double acting type uh, cylinder, you see, 
here are two uh, inputs from this side and this side. When here is um, input from this side, this cylinder will move this one, and the trap here from this area will be bent. And when uh, in the second case, when the air is input from this side, this piston will go this side, and the trap here from this area will be bent from this. Side. Okay. So uh, this is this is the double acting. Uh, this is the double acting type. Uh, cylinder and this is the single acting type uh, cylinder okay. so you can see uh, in hydraulic actuator they can produce both 25 times greater than the pneumatic cylinder of equal size so this is a uh, very uh, rigid or a very uh, highly efficient type uh, actuator as compared to your pneumatic actuator uh, now uh, could you give me a few answers of this question can you imagine what would happen if the piston of a cylinder is stopped forcefully or in a double acting cylinder if any one of the inlet oil tube line got damaged while operation what would happen you just think over it all this question and uh, you can reply me through my mail id or you can reply to vikas sir also okay. so we'll see next our uh, electrical actuator the electrical actuator works on the principle of Lorentz force. Force realized by a current carrying conductor L and Faraday's law. Motion of conductor in magnetic field will produce EMF. Okay, this is the all of you know what is Lorentz force and Faraday's law. Uh, I will not explain it again. Just uh, I will just to explain this. So types of the actuators are your solenoid bulbs. Okay. Uh, electrical motor, DCS your uh, stepper motor. And you can see this is the type of uh, your SOP, uh, solenoid operated valve. Here a plunger is there, and these are the coil. As uh, as soon as the, this coil is energized, this uh, piston will start, uh, or the plunger will start uh, moving to and fro. And this is you can you to so see this is the motor in uh, electrical AC motor. It's uh, the speed of the motor depends on the number of volts, frequency of AC light, and the amount of torque loading on motor causing slips. These are the few working uh, principle of uh, this type of electrical actuators. Now we will see uh, the pneumatic actuator operation. Uh, if you see, this is a, I, I have shown you one uh, diaphragm of a control valve. So uh, this is the air input. And this is the area, and this is the type of. Okay, it translates the control signal into a large force as required to maintain the steam position. This is the steam position. Okay, suppose when there is no air input, no air in that case, the steam will be in this position. Okay, suppose when some air is input through this uh, and uh, it's uh, squeeze the steam, and this piston will uh, the steam will come at this position when air is piston. So, this movement is delta M. So you can see del time equal to area and the k is the steam constant into delta p. Delta p is the force difference. This is the pressure. Sorry, delta p is the uh, pressure difference. Uh, here, shaft travel is linearly proportional to the applied control pressure. So the delta p is the linearly proportional with the steam moment. This is an example of a pneumatic diaphragm actuator. Uh, you can see by tensile control valves cannot control the process. Manual valves, uh, manual valves require an operation to position them to control the process. Valves that must be operated remotely and not automatically require special device to move them. This device is called actuator. So without actuator, a control valve cannot it operates by combining combination of force created by air and spring forces. The actuator position a control valve by transmitting its motion to the system. So as I told earlier, when this uh, air is attracted on this type of it squeezes the spring as soon as this spring is uh, compressed uh, this will push this uh, stream to go down or upward accordingly in case of air to close this spring is uh, below so that the, the stream will go down and close this plug in case of air to open i will uh, explain all this in, in my very next slide in that case this spring will be in upper side okay so that this plug will get open, and you can see uh, here uh, the pneumatic piston actuator. These are the example of pneumatic actuator. This is a diaphragm type, and this is a pneumatic piston actuator. Practical signal. 
you can see uh, this is a, uh, a double electing type piston cylinder i told earlier this is one of the input and this is the another of the input, uh, input when air is input to this port the cylinder will this piston will comes out and the trapped air inside this area will get vented and in the second case when air will come from this port the trapped air inside this cage will comes out from this portion and this cylinder will be compressed as you see so next is control actuator feedback members of control actuator so what are the feedback members first one is SPT thing position calculator this is the very vital things uh, for a control valve to work it is a position uh, control device okay and works on the principle of your uh, force balance display so when um, there are three signals uh, this is the instrument uh, this is the supply pressure this is the instrument pressure and this is the output okay when 3 to 15 psi will come to this um, this area this portion it will move this fellow towards and forward and this fellow will uh, operate this uh, huge lever uh, through this clapper nozzle this is the clapper this is the nozzle system because uh, 3 to 15 psi cannot uh, operate this system so this 3 to 15 psi will actuate this uh, 3 to 4 kg of um, supply pressure which is held here so 3 to 15 psi will actuate this 3 to 4 kg of supply pressure and this 3 to 4 kg of supply pressure will actuate this paper nozzle system and accordingly the back pressure from this will uh, the output of this uh, mechanism position control and this from the, uh, this line it will go to the diaphragm and it will control the steam of the control valve. okay so we'll see um, the actual operation in my very next day next is feedback position this is the feedback position you can see the image it is a device which uh, send out 4 to 20 uh, millimeter signal by converting linear motion to angular motion as i already told uh, that this works on the principle of LVDD. so when the steam of the control valve moves it, the steam is connected to the potentiometer circuit uh, of this uh, device and accordingly uh, the, uh, the linear motion will move the potentiometer uh, pop inside this circuit and this linear will be converted to this circular motion and accordingly the resistance will uh, change potentiometer and 4 to 20 millimeter signal will be uh, generated as the output uh, to the pieces distributed for the system. and finally this is the ITP converter uh, I hope your um, class teacher already uh, explained it in your process control uh, lecture it works on the principle of force balance system it converts 4 to 20 million to 3 to 50 psi pneumatic system we will see all this in my next just see so this See, I told you that this is the instrument airline, and you can just see the video output, and this is the output, uh, and this is the supply line separate. Just I told you that uh, when this 3 to 15 psi comes over there, this how and actuates the and it will move the this uh, flapper, and this will actuate this. Uh, 3 to 4 kg uh, pressure and accordingly it will move you see that uh, this will move like this and flapper will move and the back pressure will be the output to the dipop and the control steam of the control valve will operate if you have any doubt you can mail me uh, regarding this this is the i2p converter this is the input of supply line of 1.5 kg and this is the output from where 3 to 15 psi will go to the mechanical position of control valve and from there 4 to 20 milliamps will come from this yes this 4 to 20 milliampere signal will energize the coil inside this i2p uh, converter and accordingly we, it will uh, just control the 1.5 uh, kg pressure signal to 3 to 15 psi and there is inside a flapper nozzle system and the back pressure will uh, operate the mechanical positioner as i told it earlier so this is a few question for you you can uh, take screenshot of this very 
important question to test yourself. So uh, types of control valves. You can see there are multi turn and quarter turn. In multi turn, you will see annular, gate type one, and in quarter turn, butterfly plug and valve. Okay. So you can see in the next slide. I have selected only four bulb. This is the globe bulb. You can see this is the plug. So is regulated by the Dix type element or the plug that forms a seal with that uh, switch. In the and this is the gate bulb, and this is the butterfly bulb, and this is the ball bulb. All of you know all these uh, bulbs, and it's working. You just go through it. And in my next slide, control bulb. Actually, uh, the control bulb was uh, introduced by Sir Leno da Vinci by sketching a moving plug with pattern. And in the later on, uh, Sir James Watt in the 18th century first uh, first made his fly ball governor developed for his steam engine. And it only have pulp actuator, pulp positioner, and pulp board. You see, as I told earlier, if the airline is from this part, this is air to open or fail close. In that case, this plug will move downward. And if it is from this side below the diaphragm, and spring will be upward. This will be here to open. Okay. And this uh, plug will come uh, lifted out. Okay. So this is the uh, view will be uh, here to open type. Or you can say this is a uh, reverse acting or this uh, is a direct acting. Okay. So I will not uh, tell you uh, all this explanation over here because we have very less amount of time. You just pin sort or you will get the recording. Now this is the pulp accessories. You can see. Bonnet your pulp plug, sheet rings, plugs, uh, all are mentioned here. This is the actuator part, and this is the body of the control valve. Theory of control valve, all of you know. Uh, you can see this uh, 0 milliampere is going to this, and again, while 4 milliampere is going to this, you can see this spring is lifting, and this plug also going, and this liquid is flowing. Now, this is 16 milliampere, the diaphragm is lifting, and you can see this plug is also. Just go to this all this principle uh, just q equal to k root over delta p. so what will be the basic principle of this control valve or the functioning of this control valve this is the command 0 percent 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent and 100 percent and this equally this 4 to 20 million are divided close 1 by 4 opening half opening 3 by 4 over full opening so this is the main thing when input signal from bcs is coming 4 to 20 million pairs, it is converting to 3 to 15 psi and this signal is going to mechanical position i already told uh, so that position and this uh, supply pressure the 3.5 to 4 kg is actuating the flapper or the bellow here and accordingly that 3 to uh, 3.5 to 4 kg pressure is going through this airlock relay and acting on this type and accordingly this spring is compressed and the valve is this is the basic function of it control valve. You can see uh, a few field images where I am uh, overrolling and control valve and here the calibration you can see to 4 to, 2, 4 to 20 million per calibrator I am calibrating this control valve also. This is a few images of uh, various model of control valve during my visit to Kochi and control valve workshop. Uh, these are the here the spring uh, so this is the air to open. There are the very models, uh, the different models of control valves. These are the very important factors of control valves. CV. All of you know what is CV. Uh, this is the critical flow. It is a coefficient that defines how pressure will recover after it will drop to its lowest point. Flashing. Flashing is the initial stage of fermentation. It occurs in liquid flow while some of the liquid changes permanently. Capitation. It is the same as flashing, except that the pressure is recovered in outlet flow system, thus the vapor pressure is returned to liquid form. And noise, there are uh, two types of noise uh, in control valve, aerodynamics and hydrodynamics, when uh, referring to your book. And um, in control valve, there are a few types of leakage. Class 1, mutual uh, between vendor and owner. Class 2, 0.5% of rated control valve. Class 3, 0.1% of rated flow, co rated valve flow coefficient. Class 4, 0.01 percent and class 5, 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 milliliter per minute of water for PSC of sort of pressure. And in class 6, bubble type leakage. These, these leakages are very important. In our process industry, we prefer 0.01 percent of RNC. Okay. This is actually we prefer 
in our uh, instrumentation control plan. We operate in power plant or in stuff. Okay. And this is a uh, few questions you can uh, take screenshot and work it in your home. Just to take screenshot of this. Thing. Uh, see, uh, there are three um, type of characteristics so when designing a control valve: quick open, opening or on-off, linear or equal percentage. Okay, this is the graph for a linear control valve. The plug will uh, look like this, and in case of quick opening, the plug will look, look like this. In case of equal percentage, the plug will look like this. Okay, so in case of uh, quick opening, when the CV is 70%. But uh, the CV will be 70 for 10 percent of the skip. We'll uh, see in the next slide. You can see this term. Uh, when the uh, lift is 10 percent, for linear it will 10, for 50 it will 50, for 70 means uh, there will be a linear flow as per the plug lift. But in case of uh, equal percentage, you see for 10 percent opening there will be 2.95, for 50 it will be 40, for 70 it will be 30, mm -hmm. and like that in case of uh, your quick opening for 10 it will be 70, and in case of 70 percent it already reached 99 okay so this is the uh, selection and sizing portion and uh, i hope our last slide the selection and sizing is de depend on few factors if the control valve is undersized um, so it depends upon your flow medium water plus steam it depends upon valve provision five material pressure temperature gradient liquid flux valve action and pipe diameter these are the factors Thank you everyone for your participation and uh, listening to my uh, speech on final control element. If you have any doubt or any queries, you can directly mail me or you can contact your um, coordinator. Thank you, Kasa. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chakraborty, for your valuable time and nice and wonderful speech on the technical topic of final control element. Okay. So I also thank all the participants from different college like Billa Institute of Technology, Kolkata, RCC Institute and Information Technology, Kolkata, Nojrul Centrary Polytechnic, Rupnayanpur, Heritage Institution of Technology, Kolkata, Holdia Institute of Technology, Holdia, College of Engineering and Management, Kolaghat, Dr. B.C. Roy, Engineering College, Durgapur, and lastly, Asansol Engineering College, Asansol. And I also thank for our department, Applied Electronics and Instrumentation and management of Asansol Engineering College for such wonderful platform provided us for the knowledge lockdown period. Thank you all.